prior to and during the war, development work had taken place in Europe on the gas turbine engine. And by 1945, a number of single and multi-engine jet aircraft had been flown in Great Britain and Germany. Amongst them, the famous ME-262, which the B-17s were to meet during the closing stages of the war. In 1943, the United States Army Air Force had issued its requirements for a jet bomber, and in 1945, with access to the work in Germany, as well as its own research, Boeing started development of the B-47, which first flew in 1947. With its high aspect ratio wing and six engines, it presented its pilots with many problems. The wing could flex as much as 17 feet at its tip, and at certain altitudes, moving the stick back would result in a slow speed stall, and moving it forward resulted in high speed buffeting, which became known as coffin corner. A British designer said of the B-47, it had little control at high speed, had to be landed through a letterbox, and would never be accepted at Boscombe Down, the British Aircraft Evaluation Centre. But yet again, valuable lessons were learned and put into use in its successor, the B-52. the B-47 and B-52 was to stand Boeing in good stead for the commercial battles to come. Production director Joseph Sutter continues the story. Going back to World War II, I remember Boeing uh, got heavily involved in bombers, B-17s and B-29s for the war effort, and that really put Boeing out of the commercial business for several years. At the end of the war, uh, Boeing with the desire of getting back in the commercial business, first developed an airplane derived from the B-29 using that wing, and it used a very, very large reciprocating uh, engine. But jets had started development in World War II, and over in England, uh, de Havilland, uh, using a ghost engine developed by, by their own company, was developing the Comet. Uh, Boeing was watching um, that activity very hard. Uh, Boeing, meanwhile, had developed the B-47 bomber, which was a pure jet, and it was obvious that the jet engine was going to 
produce a dramatic improvement in uh, reliability, uh, uh, performance, and uh, we believed in economics and in uh, and finally in range when the engines quit burning so much fuel. Uh, the Comet uh, made quite an impression and pretty much proved that jet travel was uh, going to be far superior to struggling through the air at 20,000 feet in, in the clouds and slow speed. So uh, uh, when an engine came along that uh, looked like it was going to produce an efficient jet, uh, we immediately uh, began exploring the possibility of jet airplanes. Uh, Boeing first did it by using a Pratt & Whitney engine and building a prototype. We called it the 367-80. It was actually the prototype of the uh, 707 airplane. It was built using Boeing's own fund. Only one airplane was built. It was never intended to certify it or put that particular model in service. It was to pr prove the concept. And uh, the Dash 80 really uh, made quite an impression and very quickly uh, developed into the 707 program. Uh, that first model was a, a intercontinental uh, model. New York to London was one of the prime routes. Pan American, British Airways uh, were a couple of the uh, key customers. Uh, that kept developing from model to model and, and we, we finally built about 900 of, of those airplanes and the 707 really uh, did a lot towards establishing long haul jet travel. The 707 was to become one of the best known aircraft in the world and was to help in the development of a new military order, the KC-135 tanker, which was built for the United States Air Force and is seen here being rolled out for the first time in July 1956 alongside the KC-97, which it was designed to replace. Had it not been for the military orders, things could have been tough for Boeing. It was not until 1963 when over a thousand 707s had been sold that the aircraft moved into profit. However, Boeing's next aircraft, the medium haul 727, was to become the world's best selling airliner, with nearly 2,000 entering service around the world. With the smaller 737, together they formed the backbone of major airlines. After the uh, 707 and, and a much greater acceptance of air travel, um, it was obvious that if that efficiency could be built in other airplanes, uh, the whole air transportation system could take off and uh, produce quite a bit of uh, benefits to everybody, including profits to the operators. So uh, Boeing then pursued me medium haul airplanes like the 727 and finally all the way down to the little 737. So the jets really covered the whole field. Um, air travel really did take off because of the jets. And it was obvious that uh, the next step is to uh, try and satisfy a bigger market uh, demand. More people wanted to travel. Uh, the cost of air travel was still a little bit too high. Uh, the way to improve that is to go after um, uh, better efficiency, which meant improved engines and better aerodynamics, better structure, and larger capacities. Boeing, in discussing uh, the situation with the, uh, the major uh, potential customers, was amazed to find out uh, that the airplanes we were thinking of were too small. And that really was the um, bringing into being of an airplane the size of the 747. That, was, that size was not picked by Boeing. It was picked by uh, airlines like Pan American, British Airways, Lufthansa, Japan Airlines. And uh, it, it was quite a shock to uh, we engineers when they asked us to produce an airplane uh, that large, especially with a brand new style of engine called the high bypass ratio engine. And, and you have to give a lot of credit to the engine manufacturers. Without those kind of engines, we couldn't be making the type of airplanes like the 747. But the combination of a very efficient high bypass ratio engine 
also it gave us the ability to lift that capacity into the air. That produced uh, operating economics. That really produced air transportation as we know it today. It was a very, very bold gamble. Um, uh, we, Boeing was putting the net worth of the company online. Uh, it exhausted Boeing's resources and uh, uh, Boeing got pretty thin financially at the time we delivered the first 747. I think that kind of a gamble uh, would be hard to take today. On February the 9th, 1969, after days of sub-zero conditions, the 747 and its crew were ready for the first flight. The rain and cold conditions still threatened, and the hope for break in the weather did not materialize. They waited for a break in the clouds that covered Payne Field Everett, Washington State. Then, just before noon, the hoped for break in the clouds came, and the 747's crew decided to attempt a takeoff. In less than a thousand yards of runway, the 16 wheeled, 317 ton largest passenger aircraft in the world took to the air. After a little over an hour's flying, the 747 heads for home. It was to be the beginning of a new era of jet transport, carrying more people further and faster. of the jumbo was born. with it, uh, it uh, somewhat got involved with uh, national objectives which didn't make economic sense and uh, Boeing was developing a, a very good and efficient SST uh, but frankly it didn't have enough range or capacity to offer supersonic flight at the economic level that would allow enough people to buy a ticket. 
And that really is why the SST disappeared in the mid-1970s. It was competing against the uh, 747, and there, there was no competition. Uh, there is improvements in technology. Uh, the engine manufacturers know uh, potentially what kind of engine we need. It will be a tremendous investment in that kind of engine and airplane. And uh, it'll come, but it's still going to be a long ways off because of the, the terrific, very, very large amount of uh, uh, financial uh, input into the program. But it'll happen. In 1960, Boeing acquired the Vertol Aircraft Corporation in Morton, Pennsylvania. Frank Piasecki had developed and flown a large tandem rotor helicopter in 1945, at the time, the largest helicopter built carrying 10 passengers. Various developments followed, resulting in the H-21 series, known in the Army as the Flying Banana. Seen here working on offshore posts that serve as part of the early warning system for the United States. capacity, they did valuable rescue work during the Andrea Doria disaster and during the floods in Mexico. From the Flying Banana, Boeing went on to develop the Chinook battlefield helicopter, 550 of which were used in Vietnam. had grown from just 21 at the old Red Barn to over 130,000, some of whom are working on the new generation of jet transports. Red Barn, Boeing 757 is ready to taxi into position. Boeing 757, proceed on the runway. 757. When 170 at 20. Roger. Here. 